You never know when or where you'll get inspired. Sometimes it's your friends, sometimes your family, a comedian, a stranger, or even that man on the street. Walks of Life is a show that aims to explore the thoughts, stories, and perspectives of different people like you and me from all walks of life. This is Danny Frank's Walks of Life. the victors yeah i'm pretty happy with that. uh we are in studios or no we're in yeah studio city overlooking we're at the university city overlook uh up on the holland we saw a tick doctor a tick talker a tick talker in a uh, vampire outfit yeah it looked like count wacula yeah uh, he looked like a doctor it was weird. <laughs> he did except he was holding uh a panda head for some he reason. had a panda head. it was weird man isn't it man tiktok's just weird tiktok is like really fucked up you know, going viral is almost like winning the lottery now. You know what I mean? Like, we all yeah. watched that guy longboard to dreams and, you know, ocean spray. Oh, yeah. He got a whole truck. Yeah. And, you know, their stock went up after that? No shit. Their stock went up. Me- memes increase revenue. That makes sense. So Isn't too. that crazy now that that's how it is now? Like, that, yeah. Well, you know, it, it is too, though. That guy represents the underdog. Oh, he absolutely right? does. Like, he's all, yeah. But and, like, everybody loves an underdog, yeah. really. Like, but it, the, the idea that, like, memes and all that does affect, I mean, we saw it with the election. That's and true, stuff. actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this last election, actually, memes were a significant political weapon. There was definitely times <laughs> where I was watching it where it's like, you know, I know, you know, I didn't vote for Trump, but it was just like, yeah. I looked at some of these memes, I'm like, yo. Whoever's writing for these Republicans is fire. Dude, yeah. Now, would you say that, by the way, uh, before we get too deep, uh, we're honored today with one of, to be welcomed with one of the kindest guys in Hollywood. Um, really awesome comedian. Uh, Roast Battle Season 2 champ. And uh, all around, just good dude. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Castillo. Yeah, just, just all, all around general good dude. I like that. It's- yeah, that's, that's the credit that's the I want. That matters, man. That's the credit I think that matters more than anything. Yeah. Because there, I think that gets to a point where, like, if you're just a good enough dude, and then like you might say something controversial, people uh, will be like, "Well, you know, he's got a point." You know what I mean? Like they're they're more <laughs> likely to listen. You know, likability does go a long way, man. Yeah, it really does. Because then you don't sound like a crazy person. You're like, "Well, I like this guy, and he's 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 like a good dude. Like, so maybe he's not, you know." being insane about what he's talking about yeah i'm just saying epstein didn't uh do anything <laughs> Whoa, wrong no i'm just kidding <laughs> opinions <No>. expressed <laughs> by the guests on danny frank's walks of life do not necessarily reflect uh, around. i think uh, humor and comedy is just it's i was talking to another comic about this today where it was like i just don't want trump to be in or i just want joe biden to win so we can stop making jokes about Trump. You know what I mean? Like, I Dude, want comedy yeah. to go back to the regular, where, where everyone wasn't so incensed. You could be racist, ironically. We've had enough of this craziness. Dude. Yeah. It's, it's edging way too close to, like, a real civil war. Yeah, yeah, You know, and, like, he's just a fucking asshole all the time. And it's, don't get me wrong, it's funny. Oh, yeah, you absolutely. Know, it's, he's hilarious sometimes, but this yeah. dude's in charge of everything. Yeah, man. It's kind of weird. Um but yeah, no, I appreciate that you push the envelope and uh, <laughs> no, in terms of comedy, like yeah, you yeah. don't, you don't, you know, you don't censor yourself. No, no, no. You, to me, are a hero in that you are like one of the freest per- people that I think I know. Yeah, and I think you, we were talking about that a little bit on the drive up and yeah. I think it took me a little bit to kind of like realize that, you How'd know, you get there? Uh, I, 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 it's weird. I think it was like, you're kind of always, I'm kind of, I guess I was always there, you know? Like, um, you know, after winning Roast Battle, I started, like, going on the road and featuring and, like, making money and then, like, you know, it was good and still working at the store and, like, being in the mix. And it was, like, I was dying to get in all these rooms and I wasn't getting on JFL. And I was, like, you know, I, just, I, w- I didn't go. To, I went to South by Southwest and, like, just shit like that didn't click. And I was, like, well, what's going on? And I filled out all these packets and then, <laughs> you know, 
the times where I would get close to getting a writing job, I remember I would always like talk to Rogan and all them and be like, yo, I think I'm about to get this writing job. I might go to New York. And they were like, you know, they would always stress to me that like writing jobs are great to make money, but you want to be a headliner. Like you want to be in clubs on the weekends doing it. You know, you want to, you know, people would complain about how shitty it was getting paid for like minimum the weekend, which is like however much a headliner gets paid. That's like, you know, you're not doing door deals or nothing. You're just right. basically like, yo, we fuck one of the big guys couldn't do it this weekend. You're here this, you know, here free tickets, you know, paper the room kind of deal. <clears throat> um, you still get the experience though. And yeah, and that's room. that's what I want. Like I want that shit. And um yeah, I think the I got to that point where it was like I I focused more on just the stand up, you know, I wanted to become a paid regular yeah. and I focused on like being at the club and getting better at stand up and I was going on the road so much that I was like getting up all the time and I was able to like, you know, I was doing 20 minutes a night, 25, 30 for some people and then you know, it's four shows, five shows in the weekend, so it's like Dude, two and a, a half hours of time that you're just on fucking stage. So, like, I think the more that I got better, more confident in stand-up, and that I knew I could always do that, and, like, you know, I'd get writing jobs, like, ghost writing jobs. Like, people were like, hey, can you help me write roast jokes, or can you help me, I'm doing this deus thing with my, you know, and they start writing for, like, YouTubers and shit. Does that happen consistently enough where... Yeah, like once or twice a month. Like, a guy, oh, a guy will hit me up and be like, hey, can you, you know, do this? And I was like, all right, dope. But it gets me in those circles. But also made me realize it's like, oh, like when I would almost get writing jobs, it was like, all right, we're going to give you a half a writer's job. So you're only going to get paid this much. Because they're always trying to fuck you in a right. way. You know, they want to make you jump through a bunch of hoops to finally get the job. So I was like, well, do I want to jump through all those hoops and then get worse at stand-up? And it was like, no... You know, every time I didn't get a writing job, I just ended up doing dope shit. Like I, I, you know, I didn't get the, I didn't get a writing job for um, comedy knockout, and I had like the dopest packet. And I'm not just saying that because I was, <clears throat> I'm not just saying that to be to to like toot my own horn, but like I had just come off the roast battle win. The packet was designing roasting games. Oh, shit. So I fucking just murdered it. And then I just, like, all the stuff that they were asking me, I just murdered. Because it was just, that was my wheelhouse. And I literally just did the same thing a week and a half before. So when they offered me the job, they were basically like, uh, you know, it's going to be like half the pay. It's, no, you're not going to oh, be like a like staff you, job. Dude. You're a consultant. <clears throat> but you also have to fly out there and you have to put yourself up. So in reality, I would have made no money. Right. And it had just, you know what I mean? And Been for experience. Yeah, and at, and that's when, like, Rogan had just asked me to go out on the road. That's when Bert had just asked me to start going out on the road. The biggest comedians in the world. So it was like, right. you know, yeah. well, do I want to take this writing job or do I want to stay in favor with these people and, like, go on the road? And that's what kind of the thing was Rogan was saying. He was yeah. like, you know, stand-up's stand what it is. Stand-up's what it is. Stand-up's what it is. And uh, the podcast and all that jazz. Yeah, and they're like, that's what's the TikTokers. most important thing. Yeah, TikTokers. <laughs> that's the most important thing. God damn. Uh, that's the most important <laughs> thing is stand up. And um, yeah, so it was just like once I got past, and the only thing that it, I was doing was just working at the store and doing stand up. And once COVID hit, all that kind of ended. Yeah. That's when I kind of realized it was like, oh, I had it. Like, that was freedom. Freedom, like, the worst part of my day was having to wake up at 10 o'clock, smoke a bowl, go to work, watch Netflix, answer the phones, talk to my favorite comedians, text them about what times their sets are and shit. That sounds like hell, And then man. have to go back to, you know what I mean? And then have <laughs> yeah. to come back at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock to do sets, and I'm smoking weed the whole fucking day. And it's like, well, that's not a bad life at all, Frank. No, that's a, a great life. But, um, you know, that is freedom, you know? It's... Being able to go on the road with these dudes and then also to be able to go to different cities and do stand-up in different cities and uh, not really caring if I got these jobs or not. Because in the end, it's like, no, the stand, it's stand-up's what I love to do. Jeselnik said this shit, um, and I wrote it down when he said it, but he was like, uh, you know, be a stand-up that writes. Don't be a writer that does stand-up. Because you could see those guys. Yeah. You totally see what those guys look like, yeah? What do you think the difference is going out there and just hitting the mics? No, I think it, it's it's doing it's like getting like working on your craft. Um, it's definitely hitting the mics. It's it's actively trying to get good enough to get into the clubs. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't get it. I'm not being seen, or it's just not clicking for me. It's like, well, you know, you just gotta, you know, you gotta make sure you're on your best game. You gotta actively write. 
you got to be realistic with yourself, but also you got to know that when the opportunity comes, you got to smash. Yeah. You got to execute. People forget that execution part's it. You have to execute. If so you, you gotta don't always be ready. Right? Yeah, and if you don't execute, then you know they have that view of you for a while, and then it's hard to shake that. So that's why execution's key. So what do you think the key is to getting that point of consistency? Just continuing to. Uh, it's just grind being it on out. stage all the. Every time you get on stage, you get a little bit better. Yeah. Even the bombs. So it's just being on stage all the fucking time. When you mentioned to me, too, that in addition to doing stand-up all the time, uh, you also write pretty diligently and like every morning, right? I like how we're both trying to bullshit about comedy when we're both just staring at two, two, two fucking TikTokers. TikTokers, man. And they're just fucking... <laughs> Just the fucking those yoga pants. It's it just is hysterical, man. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm trying to. Like, no, no, have absolutely. A real yeah, we're trying to. Yeah, yeah. And then but it's fucking, like a missed yeah. opportunity if you yeah. look away. <laughs> like, yeah. God, we're fucking fat pigs. Uh, I'm sorry. We're, I'm, I apologize but, to everyone, including my wife. This is what. This is the clip. I blame society. I do. I blame society. Um, and I blame these apps. I. I. This is. <laughs> This is the fucking clip that's going to get cut and put in an article when I uh, get famous. They're going to be like, he talked about staring at TikTokers. Like, no one else is staring at their phone right. watching these bitches just dance. We just got to deny that yoga pants are sheer. Yeah, we like, got to. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, did you yeah. see that? Like, when there was that whole lawsuit about how uh, Lululemon's yoga pants were too sheer. Oh, really? And, yeah, but, like, it was so funny because it was like, yeah, everyone knew they were sheer. That's the whole like that's the, the yoga pants. Yeah, you think yeah. all of us? You think all the men were just right. not gonna like we? We actively were keeping it a secret, but it's also like you guys know. It was kind of like an inside secret that I think everybody had. Like when I went to Chicago, it was it like was if cold. you if you stand thirty five degrees parallel north right. and the sun is shining <laughs> up at four p.m., yeah. you get to see everything. Yeah, you just can't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, it's our <laughs> secret. It's our secret. It's like national treasure. To, fucking yeah. uh, whatever his name is, Nicholas Cage Nicholas. comes out and he's like, it's got the Lululemon fucking secret. <laughs> government doesn't want you to know this yeah 4 p.m every day all the men turn into fucking douche <laughs> just so skinny yeah fucking pigs by the uh, way do you want me to cut anything no god anything no i'm limits? just kidding uh, no 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 no. absolutely didn't not didn't seem like the person that would but I, I no not at all that that's hilarious just yeah. in case yeah. uh if, it, if you know feel free to say not at, i'm my i caught my wife uh talking it was her yeah. and her co-workers or therapists and uh i caught her her or not her coworkers, but her old coworkers at the old place she worked at. They still have a group message. Yeah. But she was like telling them about uh, uh, a hot. There's, there's, there's talking about a hot dude, just some hot guy, and I was just like, <laughs> I had my headphones off from when I was playing video games. Yeah. A very unattractive sentence. Uh, sentence. Uh, sentence. And yeah. uh, she was, I was just like, "Who are you guys talking about?" She was like, "What? Oh shit! I didn't realize you were listening." I was like, "Oh, were you talking about a hot, a, a hot guy?" And she goes, N "No." And I was like, "I don't give a fuck." I was like, I don't care that you talk about a hot guy. I was like, babe, so do you want to see what my fucking explore page looks like on my Instagram? <laughs> you would report me. It is no. Uh, you seem like actually though a very. You're joking around right now, but you guys have a really ideal looking relationship. We're a very strong relationship, and that's why I yeah. think uh, it gives me the. It shows, man. It gives me the safety to joke because we've been together for ten years. You know yeah. what I mean? Like she's been there since the beginning. Also, like, yo, I fuck, as much as I joke around and, like, I stare, yo, I hate talking to hot people. I hate... It is a lot of pressure. I fucking hate talking to right. hot people. I hate the confidence <laughs> attractive people have because I know they're not talented. And right. I, it's just like, fuck you for having it easy. And that is a, <laughs> just a... that. So, like, any, so anytime, like... It's and it, su it sucks to have that kind of relationship because anytime, like, a hot chick ever hits on me, it's very rare. But whenever it does, because it's I'm, fun, I'm funny, and then they said like, "Oh, you really?" And I'm just like, "Bitch, my wife's at home." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I get mad. I'm just like, "Er, my wife's intelligent. She can cook. She got a fat ass." And you know what yeah, I mean? Like, you know, really just get all... the fuck away from me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, bitch, what you got? Ten thousand followers? <laughs> Twenty? A million followers? I don't give a fuck. You know? Have you ever seen Fargo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Do you know a whole, whole? Can you cook? Do you know what a home cooked meal looks like?" No, because that's love. The big Lebowski. Yeah, man. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, shut up, yeah. fucking Monica Angel twenty five or whatever. Their Instagram, that sounds about right. yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. No, but yeah, I mean, it just. It, I think being in a strong relationship, it it really frees you up. Yeah, 
I look at all the guys that being able to be honest and yeah. openly communicate like your but real also, feelings. But also, it's like when you have the yeah. sound. This is really going to be very vulgar. Uh, yeah. When you have someone that you're constantly fucking, yeah. and that you just you could go. That, you know, it's, it's my wife. That's the person I go to. That where we you know we have sex, and then it's like yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like you know each other in and out. Yeah, and like, it's like <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. And it's also like you know if you're a comic going on the road, you know what I mean. If you're single, you're trying to fuck. You know what I mean. It's it's a distraction. I think being single. Yeah, and always because I know comics have always chased tail and stuff and focused on like being trying to date and all that jazz, and it's it's taken away see. from the comedy, your craft. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, you should joke, live your life and stuff, but it's like, yo, know, you know, I go, I hang out with my friends, I do stand up, and then I yeah. get the fuck out of there. I'm not trying to like hang out and talk to these bitches, you know? Yeah, no, it's a job. You're right? Yeah, you're, you're very secure with what you got at home. You got to like protect the home base. You just go out there, do your thing, come back. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and that's like I think the ideal life everybody's chasing, uh, but it's awesome that you guys very, you know, visually you can see that like you guys have a great relationship. You guys have a podcast together too, right? Yeah, kissing in a milkshake. We have not recorded any new episodes because she's been busy work. She got her dream job, so fuck yeah, dude, good for her, man. Yeah, that's awesome to see too. Yeah, you guys are coming up together. Yeah, it feels like it. It's fucking rad. Like so. Going back though, I want I want to go back before we get too far out there because there's people that are listening that may not be crazy comedy fans. Uh, got a lot of weird international, not weird, but got a lot of international listeners. Oh really? That's for so some funny. reason, I don't know why. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, they I... may not know what a comedian is, or like they may not know that Frank Castillo is like Comedy Central's champion. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like. I want to talk about a little bit too about your journey getting here. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was so from? from the Bay Area originally, yeah. Eastside San Jose, uh, represent, and uh, yeah, King and Story. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm from. Uh, like my family's originally from there. Yeah. Then I moved to Temecula. Um, that's where I originally started comedy. Temecula is like a conservative small desert town off of like the five. And, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, Island yeah, Empire, yeah. Man. The fucking IE, baby. Yep, we grew up next to a border patrol station. That shit was nice. <laughs> yeah. Officer uh, fucking Smith is a very nice guy. Saw him every day of my life. Uh, that's so funny, man. Yeah, but no, it was a good, uh, it was an interesting town to start stand up because, you know, coming from the city, it's like, yeah, you know, I was going so you're to doing comedy in the Bay Area. No, 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 I wasn't. Or... I never did any stand up in okay. the Bay Area. I did like theater and like improv and shit in high okay. school, but so to go to like Temecula was like I came from a city where it was a melting pot of cultures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you go to Mexican restaurants, yeah. they got Vietnamese hot sauce. <laughs> you got fucking. You know what I mean? Like they, everything's. Yeah, it's just everything. Every, so everything's shared. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's like you see black people in fucking the fucking Chinese chicken place because they fucking fuck with chicken hard down there, yeah. and there's fucking orange sauce that's fucking everywhere. Like you know what I mean? Like culturally, it's a huge mix of everything. Yeah. So going to Temecula, it was like, and going to a school that had just opened, a high school that just opened. Yeah. It was a gr- I was the fir- part of the first graduating senior class. Which means most of the other kids either knew each other since elementary school, yeah. or they knew each other all through their lives because they came up all together because they like split a lot of the other schools right. when this new school opened up. So it was truly like it was like a fucking alien world. It yeah. was totally different. And then I was you know I was very lucky to make the friends that I made. It's like two core dudes who were just like dope. It was weird because it was like a conservative, like very religious town. So mm-hmm. like. I was like, who smokes weed? And they were like, what? And then it was also kind of like oddly racist in a sense where they were like, you don't speak Spanish? Like, you're not kind of the kind of Mexicans we're used to. You know what I mean? Like, just they Dude, just. Dude, yeah. They were, it was just, I was <laughs> odd to them. So, like, yeah, it was just weird. And, um. Why is your skin light and yeah, you don't speak Spanish? Yeah, like, it was just, it was just, it was, just, it was just an odd spot. And I, so I was always desperately going, trying to go back to the Bay Area. And I did yeah. for a little bit, but I also. I moved back to the Bay Area in like my, like right out of high school, 1920. But I realized pretty quickly that it would, uh, if I stayed in the Bay, I just never would have flourished. I just would have drank and just done, done. Sh- I just, I would have really fucked off and just not accomplished anything. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So moving back to Temecula was kind of the smarter choice for me. And then I moved back, and that's when I started getting into comedy. I was working at Pachanga Resort and Casino. I got into the comedy through their uh, 
so the Rocky Osborne ran an open mic at the Edge. Awesome. Yeah, and then I would do the mics there, and then I got in at Pachanga Resort and Kino with Leonard Robinson. He was the booker. Um, and then, so through this whole time, are you just kind of making it up as you go along? I'm or? fucking making it up as I go. I'm just kind of just doing it. I just, yeah. I'm just keep grinding and stuff. It's just fun. And then, you know, Ryan Chartrand is when social media was kind of coming out. He was their social media guy. Yeah. And, uh, his partner like quit like day of this big thing. And he was like, he had seen me at the open mics at their like, you know, best of kind of deal in the club. And he called me and was like, do you want to host this? concert with me and it was like oh, three thousand four thousand people and it was wow. like yeah yeah so, but it wasn't like we just had to like hand out cards and stuff and just host and like you know raffle tickets and stuff still and it was, fucking cool though with yeah song. but it was also like right before they brought out like daughtry and shit you know what i mean like yeah. at, and for temecula that's fucking like aerosmith to them <laughs> yeah. fucking losers um so uh, um <laughs> yeah i started doing that and then they all just kind of liked me. And I was literally a busboy at a restaurant, at a golf course restaurant. I was a busboy. Yeah. And uh, at night, I would help their social media department write sketches and shit. And we'd shoot them because they had legit, like, movie movie production quality equipment. So they had a whole fucking Damn, dude. VR department that had, like, the newest, highest Red Epic cameras like a crazy graphics department and they're just sitting there shooting b-roll like you turn on the tv and it's like pachanga resort and casino spawn blood and it's just like showing you like fly through shot you know they were just they actually do have really high production values yeah yeah, yeah i mean by the way beautiful production value yeah. i know all those guys and they're great but they're just like you know they're like i you know want to be an artist you know what i mean like yeah so when i started going in there they were like oh this is fun completely irresponsible for them on their part like none of the bosses were double checking this at all <laughs> we literally made a fucking rap video and dude, it was been so much more fun for dude, them than it, everything dude it was on though. a youtube it's on, still on their youtube and it's still up and it's like it, i i can i find this i i don't want you to can i if i do find it can i share it <laughs> <laughs> You can, and I, it, it would, it would, dude, it would be one of those things where, like, <laughs> people would laugh their fucking asses off and be like, what oh. the fuck? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, motherfuckers. Yeah, it was really ridiculous. It would, it would be one of those clips where everyone would watch it and be like, you know what? I needed to see that. You know what I mean? This made my day a little bit brighter. So it's settled. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, no, no right. No, it's no, coming no. out. Expect uh, to find, uh, see that. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to find it. I don't know where I'm going to find I it. I gave you enough information. It. That's yeah. all I did. Uh, I gave you enough information. I didn't tell you that. Here, I'll talk. I'll, I'll drop the title of it randomly through the podcast if you can find it. Uh, Ooh, it's, yeah. like a, it's like a find your or choose your own adventure. You yeah, gotta find yeah, the clues. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we did that and, um, you know. Did that for a while. Yeah. They paid me. It was fun. Great. Host did some other clips for them and stuff. And it was getting to the point where I was like, I, you know, I was doing stand up when I could. Uh, like every weekend, they'd have a new headliner, and then like I'd hang out there pretty much on the weekends. They'd let, toss me up every once in a while to do whatever the fuck, because I was just hungry for time, and you know, I would just hang out. Like, and they would you let ask me. a lot of questions? I would ask a lot of questions, especially right. the headliners. And then I met Jesus Trejo and Steve Trevino there. Oh, and they such told a nice me guy. about the comedy store and moving up. And they're like, just take it seriously, bro. Like, move to Los Angeles. You can just be the biggest fish here. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And then it got to a point where I was like bussing tables still. Yeah. And um, you know, I, my face was on the gas station videos when you would play. <laughs> That's it. You so know what I mean? weird. Because yeah. it was the sketches that we wrote. And then it was on all the TV. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we were, yeah. So like my face was all over Petronga. And yeah, I remember people don't realize that people in like television and film and stuff are like real people doing regular real things. Yeah. So and like to I see that I version of yourself is crazy. Yeah, right? absolutely. So I'd be like fucking, you know, busting fucking tables and working hard and shit. Yeah. Working on going and doing stand up. I had another job and then I was doing like open mics around town and shit. But I'd go to open mics on my lunch and shit. Yeah. Like I'd drive and drive back and shit, all this stuff. Take my breaks all at once so I could have a full hour yeah. and just work through shit. And um Yeah, it got to the point where like I remember um I wanted to be a server at my main job at Petronga. I wanted to be a server really badly. Yeah. And it was between me and this one other guy. And the other guy was also Hispanic, but he was like 
from Mexico, only spoke span like spoke broken English, Spanish, yeah. hard fucking worker, right? Yeah. And um those dudes are the coolest. If, yeah. if you've never worked in a restaurant in California, you're really missing out. Oh, absolutely. Whole fucking if you've culture. never worked with a goddamn Guatemalan guy who's yeah. got to send money back home, then you've never seen hard fucking work. Right, yeah. People licking faces but working their Bro, asses this off. This dude <laughs> this dude fucking worked his ass off. Yeah. But um I'd been there longer and I was next in line and yeah. uh you know, the higher up guy that they gave him the job to serve her, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of one of so funny because they just, you know, the boss above him, you know, he was a good friend of mine. I'd serve him all the time. I'd like bust the tape. He just loved me and stuff because, you know, he, the guy just didn't, wasn't paying attention and promoted the wrong guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I was basically like, my manager knew I was going to be upset. And I was so fucking mad. I was so furious and all this jazz. Cause I'd been... I was fucking 20. I was turning 20, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to be a busboy for fucking another year. Right. When I, you know, when every single person I've worked with has gotten promoted. Dude, trust me. I know. You know what I mean? I was like, it was like there's, there was 12 of us when yeah. we started. I'm the only one that's not promoted. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was I like, got... yeah. And uh, I was like, my face is on the fucking TVs. Are you kidding me? But. Yeah, dude, what the fuck do yeah, you yeah. have to do to yeah, get promoted? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, are like, they on TV? Yeah, I was like, like, what the fuck? They yeah. just got a good personality? Like, yeah. what are you fucking, what are you fucking dumb? Get out of here with that bullshit. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> it was so funny because, um, you know, I was so mad. I remember I was so mad. I was in the yeah. fucking office. I was just livid. And she goes, well, now you could move to Los Angeles. And I was like, what? And she was like. You should. You want to be a comic, right? We should move to Los Angeles. Like, just like this job is only gonna. This job's only gonna hold you. Back, hold you back. Yeah. You know, you really want to be you know, be fucking. You know, pointed at a few coworkers of mine, because working at Pachanga, you know, yeah. especially as a server, yo, you could find a good apartment. You could just work there every day. And you could be fucking. You can get a job at nineteen and be fucking fifty-seven in no time. Right, have a nice truck to yourself, bro. Four by four for the dog. Weekends. You know what I mean? You're hitting the fucking river yeah. every fucking summer, yeah. taking your yearly TikTok pictures and All shit. All the natty you know light you could drink. Absolutely, shit. That's a good life. And uh, <laughs> you know, so me yeah. and Ryan were kind of working together too at the time, and I was still doing that. And then he um, got a job offer for a very cool company, mm-hmm. and he, it was in Los Angeles, and um, you know. He was like, I'm going to take it. I'm going to move to Los Angeles. And I was like, dope, man. And he was like, do you want to come with me? I was like, really? I was like, bro, I don't have any money on any of this stuff. And he's like, he was like, I know. <clears throat> you just find two jobs when you get down there. We'll make it work, whatever. You just got to, um, he's like, uh, he's like, I just can't not, I just can't get it out of my head uh, how funny you would be if you got up every single night. And I remember he said that. And I was like, you're right. And then, um. You know, I quit. I put my two weeks in, and then the manager found out. The head guy found out, and uh, he pulled me into his office and was like, uh, "You know, what do we have to do to get you to stay?" You know, and I was like, "I was like, I want to move to Los Angeles. It's my shit." And he goes, "Okay." And then uh, they offered me Ryan's job, which was a social media job, which was like six Dang. figures. So it was like, Dang. it was like, stay and fucking, you're you're good. Golden handcuffs. Though. Yeah, man, yeah. golden handcuffs. And I remember um, they offered me the job after he put his two weeks in. And we were already already in the middle of talking about moving and still, like, getting everything together. Yeah. And then I remember talking to um, my dad and being like, should I move to Los Angeles to do stand-up? And he was like, well, what do you want to do? He, he's like, do you want to do stand-up or do you want to do this job? I was like, I, I, was like, I just know if I get take, keep this job, it'll be – I just won't be happy. And I know it'll just be – like, I'll just have a lot of money. Like, it's just – it's just not. And my dad was like, you don't have any kids? Just fucking do it. My mom was like, no, take the fucking job. Um, yeah, I guess she wants the safety net for you. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My dad was like, yeah, no, nah, I'll fucking do it. Um, fuck yeah, I did. Yeah, so my, uh, you know, so Ryan basically got a place in Studio City, which we actually could probably see it from here. Oh, awesome. Got a place in Studio City, very expensive. He got me my own room. He pretty much probably, dude, bad. he paid so much fucking money in rent. And my rent, like, he really floated it for the first year. I got two jobs. He had to move, and it was like a, you know, he was like, I'm sorry, dude, you can't come with me. I was like, no, I get it. He had to move closer to his job, which was really far away. Yeah. And I made it work and stuff. But, dude, like, 
that guy made it so I could get stable. Because that's what it is. It's about getting stable when you first get here. Yeah. Once you're able, so once you get that stability, then it's like, all right, I can last. Because there's too many people I, you know, you could move here in your car, but it's just, it's a harder of a chance. It's riskier and it's like more pressure on you creatively. Because then yeah. you're like, I gotta fuck, you know what I mean? Having that pressure is great, but like that kind of pressure, that level, it's tough. But, um, you know, years later, once I run Roast Battle and got shout outs on Rogan and all that stuff, Ryan reached out to me and was like, dude, I'm so fucking proud of you. He was like, you, you, I was like, you know, I'm sorry I could never pay you back for everything you did. He was like, bro, you paid me back tenfold. He was like, you did exactly what you said you were going to do. He was like, the fact that Rogan said your name and Dude, was man. like, this kid's doing it, blah, blah. He was like, that, he was like, that is payment enough. He was like, you got the funniest dude. One of the, the guy, arguably the, one of the dudes, the goats, he goes of comedy saying your name saying that you're funny and he was like and i being able to be a part of that and to help you and knowing that i was able to do that for you he was like and that your work ethic and all that got you to that part he was like there was money well spent dude that's awesome yeah sounds like it was serendipitous that the oh. whole thing happened like it did right yeah absolutely like do you feel like uh like, could, could you ever imagine yourself living the life you lived so far when you were back then? No. Uh, I remember talking to Jesus Trejo about it because, you know, I remember I was very, very... Uh, uh, Jesus is awesome. Probably. Yeah, he's great. Shout out, Jesus. I remember I was very, like... Uh, I remember I was mad about something. I was mad about not getting something. You know, that's what... Mm-hmm. I got a short... Fucking, I got an anger problem and, you know, I got to fucking let that shit go. I take things too personally, but like, I remember not getting a writing job and being like very just frustrated and upset. And, um, you know, Jesus is just such a level headed fucking guy. So beautiful just as a person and just a good fucking soul. And that dude, you know, I can't, he's really always been just like a big brother to me. And every time I've ever like come to him for anything or like, Anytime I talk to that dude, I always, I feel like I leave the conversation either happier or just a a better person. Cause like, I remember he was, he told me, he was like, you know, bro, you can't, you can't stress or worry about shit like that. He goes, look at everything you've done. He's like, look at everything you've accomplished. He was like, if you went back in time and told yourself, Hey, I'm going to do all these things. He goes, you would think you're fucking insane. He's like, you would think you're crazy. He was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to open up for Rogan. I'm going to be a door guy. I'm going to, I'm going to be paid regular. I'm going to win roast battle. He was like, you're going to, I'm going to open up for Chappelle. I'm going to, you're going to do all the, he was like, if any person told you that when you were starting out, you'd be like, this kid's fucking nuts. And it's also like, I don't like, I, I rarely try to like, talk about that or like brag or you know what i mean i i like it to it's just like you know you just know i did it yeah those no you're you've got an impressive comedy acumen you know like your list of accomplishments as far as like comedy wise are like some of the most insane achievements like they're like they you should get like a little medal for some of the (laughs) crazy shit you've done yeah yeah like touring with Chappelle. like uh you were telling me before about a conversation you're having with like Mo Amer. Yeah. Like the people that you regularly interact with are at such a high level. And like you don't realize it yet, but I think it's pretty apparent to everybody on the outside that like you're at that same level. Mm. You know, and the further you keep going, dude, I'm sure you're just gonna get stronger and stronger. Yeah. And it's I think that's a big key part too. And I think working at the store and working yeah. the door and like taking the trash out and like grinding you know, I think that hum that that being that humbleness is like so important. Like my yeah. father would tell me that shit all the time. Like he would just be like, "Don't forget where you come from." Remember, you know, like every time I talk about Quentin the store, he'd be like, "You worked so hard to get in there." Remember, it's not a rush to get out. Yeah. And I was like, you know, because uh, perception was a big thing for me, especially near the end. Um, but he was like, you know, just don't ever, and yeah, it's, you got to be humble, you know, and I know there are certain, ter- certain times are very like strong willed about certain opinions I have, but it's because I think, I think everything that I've accomplished and how hard I work 
you know, when I do say these things, that some people are like, hey, Frank seems kind of like being an asshole. It's like, well, no, you just got to know where he's coming from. You take this very seriously. Yeah, this isn't a kid that's just like, you know, fucking around as a hobby. This is a kid who like, you know, this is his, sh- he does this, you know? Yeah. He, he fights bread for this. and butter. Yeah, yeah. This is all I have. <laughs> nah, dude. Like, yeah. uh, you have definitely a level of dedication to this as a craft that is admirable by any, like, athlete. You know, I'm sure, like, it's comparable to, like, any athlete. Mm-hmm. It's cool to see. Um, and even just talking to you makes me want to take it seriously more. So, you know, and I'm sure everybody gets that yeah. vibe, you know? Well, because I, but, you know. And again, what's cool is, like, you're smoking weed the whole time, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, because it's like. a fun time. Well, I remember, you know, going out with Rogan, it was yeah. like, he was saying some shit that, like, was really starting to blow my mind. Especially open it up to when it comes to, like, the craft of stand-up where it's yeah. like, yo, every time you're going up on stage, you should be having fun and doing something different. Yes, you should be smashing and all that jazz. He's like, but he goes, unless it's like your special recording or like a very high importance is set, you should be having fun and exploring and trying to figure shit out. Like, yeah, do the job of your comic of like f- make people laugh, but like keep getting better. Yeah. You know, I watched in the comedy store doc, you know, one of the comics was talking about how he got lazy near the end. You know, he was just, he had the same 15 minutes, you know? And it's like, I, that is the scariest thing to me is like, I, I, you know, I want to be able to do hours and make that shit yeah. different, you know, and uh, as long sets are set, uh, long sets are scary. But once you start really getting into it and start doing it, it just it it before you know it, your time's up. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, shit, I did 45 minutes. And then you're like, you're having fun. You start to realize what your act is. You know, it's not just constantly jokes, but it's also like, you know, stories or whatever. Like going out with Burt Kreischer mm-hmm. really learned the importance of like stories and like figuring stuff out from like your family and like because that's kind of like how my family is you know Mm -hmm. they're just a cast of characters yeah dude i uh you the videos i've seen of your dad your dad seems like the chillest dude of all time yeah man he's really really chill man he is he's really chill like a lot of stuff i can you know i can tell it was rough when we were coming up and stuff and i know he has a lot of regrets yeah and i know he like beats himself up for a lot of stuff that he shouldn't because I catch myself doing the same thing, you know. My, Nobody's perfect. Man. Yeah, yeah. But it's also like my wife, you know, my wife being a psychologist, it's like yeah. you start to recognize like, you know, patterns and like, yeah. you know. So like, you know, I see my dad beat himself up for a lot of shit. And I'm like, bro, you, you know, I, I worry, you know, I'm telling yeah. him he's got to stop doing it. But, you know, he's a real happy. He's just a good dude. He's happy. Seems he's just like all it. love. Yeah. Seems like it, dude. Yeah, I know. Like, um. So going back to what your dad said, he said, you know, you work so hard to get into this place. Don't be in a rush to get out. Like, what was it like uh, when you first got to L.A. getting into the comedy store? Like, did you know anybody? So I moved. Were you just a fish in like a new so pond? I, I had uh, been doing the, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm admit, I can admit something that I will eventually be used against me. Especially since they talk so so much shit on them. I, I did a few bringer shows, you know what I mean? Because oh. you're young, you know, you don't know any better. But, yeah. you know, it kind of got me into it, and I kind of, like, met people. And you meet the comics. I hung out at the store. I met Trey Stewart, you know? Yeah. We became good friends. Uh, Quincy Weekly, you know, all those guys. Um, you know, I started, I ended up living in an apartment with a few other comics. You know, renting the floor and shit. Uh, sleeping on the couch and shit, you know, and then me and my wife ended up getting in our own apartment finally. Um, but when I first started getting to the store, it was like a year and a half of just hanging out every Monday, mm-hmm. signing up for the mic, maybe getting picked, not getting picked, and then like getting the job offer eventually. So when I got offered the job, it was about, I think, a year and a half. Was it a year and a half total of trying to get the job? And then the, from the last time I got up to when I got offered the job was three months. Oh, wow. So last time I got up on Potluck to them offering my job was three months. So it was, yeah, so it was like a year and a half and then, yeah. That's crazy. But in, in that time, it was like, you know, I was just doing the mics. It was just, I was, I was just going, I was, I'd go to Potluck and then if I didn't get up, I'd go to five other mics. I didn't just hang out at Potluck. Yeah. I'd go to five other mics and then I'd come back at the end of the night to the store. Because that's how it was. It was like, you didn't get up? Cool, get the fuck out. Go do your shit. Get better. Come back. Because that's, awesome. that's how that's how you do it, you know? And Monday nights, I would get up fucking like seven times a night, dude. I was fucking... 
And that's what Fuck, that, seven times a day. Yeah, I would do this thing called Monday mic runs um, where I would, I ended up getting to the point where I knew everybody or I'd sign up one place and they'd drive another place. Yeah. Like I'd be like, fuck it. This is the, I would take it like a job. Just call ahead and ask somebody to sign you up or what? Or just the host knew me and yeah. fucked with me or the hour I'd ask to go up at the end because I knew I could go do all these other mics and then come back in time. That's you know dedication I mean? though to be able Bro, to do yeah. seven in a row, man. But it was also like, you know, at that time I was working two jobs, working the store and going to Starbucks. So yeah. it was like Mondays were like my only nights to get up. So it was like, fuck it. If I can't get a bunch of times during the week, I'm yeah. going to get up seven times on Monday. Might as well, yeah. I have to. You got to right? get the numbers up at some Yeah, that was a little later. But so during like the year and a half of just trying to get in at the store, yeah. I fucking um, was able to finally get in. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was like, is this guy coming up? What's up? What's up? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got you. Just be very careful because it's a thousand dollar fine. Oh, it's a here? Yeah, yeah. I, I smoked in my car. So. You there? Yeah, yeah, you see the sign? I would. Can't if, do it in the public. You area. guys are tinted. What I would do is smoke in the car and then just fucking, when you're done, air it out. All right, okay, thank you. No problem, bro. I'll, I'll return like in two minutes. Hey, I'll man, take your time. Thank you. Thank no problem, doc. So that was strange. so funny. Yeah, was, I like how just <laughs> on edge we are about TikTokers. I know, dude. Well, they, this guy had confidence coming up and like, asking for a lighter. You like, and your fucking smooth ass jaw, dog. Right. <laughs> bro, if he starts a fire, I'm just the first dude I'm snitching on. Oh, my God. How hilarious. Yeah, oh, bro. Oh, damn. Funniest. My lighter's got my fingerprints on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, was that my Frank Castillo lighter? Uh -huh. <laughs> damn it. Yeah. What were we talking about before this? Um, Working hard to get into the store, oh. doing seven mics a night. So, so I was working hard working to get into the, the store. To start. My dad would come and visit. Yeah. So my dad would visit like every few years at the yeah. store, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so he got to see me like sign up for the mic and then not get up and then go do other mics. Like people were always laugh because it was like, you know, you bring your dad to mics. So it was like, no, my dad wanted to see what the fuck I was doing. You know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. like, hey, I'm moving to Los Angeles to do this thing. And he was like, all right, well, I want to see it. So like one day we took like the bus everywhere and shit. And like we, he was just down. He wanted to see what I did. And he, you know, he loved it. He had such a blast. But, you know, once I finally got hired at the store, it was great. Uh, Josh Martin, of all people, told me um, that they were looking to for, a, you know, they were looking to hire a person. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Adam came up to me and was like, uh, you know, I hear you're the guy. And then I went and talked to Tommy and then he gave me the whole spiel. And I fucking cried when I got fucking hired, dude. Yeah, I cried I when did. I got hired. I cried when I got passed. Dude, it was imagine. crazy. I cried. Dude, I cry a lot, man. I cry a lot. I, get I it. cried during roast battle, yeah. bro. <laughs> like, I fucking yeah. dude, I bawled, bro, when he gave me the job cuz I called my wife and like yeah. girlfriend at the time and was like told her I was like I got the fucking job, dude. It was great. Dude, I can only Adam imagine. passed me in the same place that he hired me. Yeah. In the exact same spot. So it was just very serendipitous. But, man, yeah, so, like, getting the job was great because, like, you know, my dad would come and visit. And, like, you know, every year he'd visit. Yeah. So, like, every year he got to see the progress. So he got to see me not get up at the mic. He got to see me get get up at the mic eventually. He got to see me fucking become a door guy. He got to see me get better at being a door guy. He got to see me open up for Joe. He got to see me open for Dave. You know, he got to see me become past. He got to see me win roast insane, battle. He, got, he was there the whole time I was running jokes the, the day before the finals, you know. So yeah. he got to see the whole progress. And, like, to be able to go into the fucking bar and, like, see Joe and Joe be like, you know, I'm real proud of your son. He's a good dude. And then, like, oh, dude, that all of his favorite comics be like, your son's cool as fuck, blah, blah, blah. He's like, it's like, dude, he he loves it, man. It's He's the proudest guy. He's the proudest father ever. Dude, I why wouldn't he be? You're fucking Frank Castillo. Yeah, yeah. No, um, dude, that's fucking awesome to hear that he got to see you go through that whole rise through all that. Um, not to nerd out too much on it, but I do enjoy the legacy and like the lore of the comedy store mm -hmm. and all that. And, like, I'm just gonna ask, like, what if you were to describe like the comedy store and what it is and the vibe and all that? To like somebody in France somewhere, because mm. uh, there are quite a few French yeah, listeners yeah. for some reason. Hilarious. Like, how would you describe it? Like, um, to a so complete like, outsider, what is the store? The what store is, the is just store? like a an old comedy club, three rooms, very mom and pop. It's dark. It's dank. 
red lights, like the red light district, you know, it's got a lot of history. You feel a lot of energy when you come in there. It's just very much, you know, feels very artsy, you know. A lot of great artists have been there historically, great people. Like a lot of good energy. Um the OR is just small. It's just everyone's on top of each other, but dude, magic just happens. You can just feel it. Same thing in the main room. It's bigger, bigger shows, more people, but like you could just fucking when people laugh and it's a big one, hey, you just just like a fucking lion's roar on top of each other. It's so great. Dude, yeah, no, that place is amazing. And uh I mean, the first time you went there, do you recall it? what it was like um yeah i remember being very intimidated i remember being like holy shit you know and just like i remember stay, staying in one spot and just being a fly and just paying attention you know i didn't want to i didn't know the rules so i didn't want to like be somewhere i wasn't allowed to be right but it was definitely like you know you could see it man the magic of being the you know this shit's real <laughs> yeah man it's yeah, a beautiful yeah. place it really is you can feel the intensity when you walk those halls and like He's not kidding when he says a lot of pe- big famous people have been through there. It's just like every yeah, famous man. person has gone through there. Dude, I've met so many fucking famous people there. It's insane. I can only imagine, man. Like, is there any like particularly oddball or like weird people no, that you no, met? No, I mean, or, I'm, I'm uh, fuck, or, like God, crazy. Gideon what was the guy or from like Twenty Four? Um, oh. Kiefer Sutherland. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, he was like, there, bro. He came to see yeah. Marilyn Rice Cup do stand up, and he just showed That's up. Right. It was him. He had two girls on his arm, bro. He walked up. He was just so living cool. life. I'm like, this motherfucker did save the world in 24 hours. Like, I thought it was like, so are you sure that wasn't just a movie about his life? Because this yeah. fucking dude is clearly Balling the out. fucking man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so like, and you know, everyone's like, I love you, bro. I love you yeah. in 24. I love you in 24. And he walks past me, and I'm just like, you know, I geek out when it comes. I get st- I get starstruck, like when I'm around comics. I respect. I just yeah. shut the fuck up and I'm just like chill. And I'm like, but in my head, I'm like, oh fuck, you know. But when it comes yeah. to like celebrities and su- certain people, I if it's someone I like, I'll get like I'm like, oh fuck, like for some reason Kiefer Sutherland. I was like, oh shit. Um, but I was like, hey man, I hate to bug. I also know what it's like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that I know what it's like to be the famous, but I like I know it's like I see. You know, people bug Joe and stuff, so yeah. I'm like, oh, I never want to be that guy. But there's a way to do it where it's clearly appreciative. Right. You know, so I, I'm always very apologetic right off the top. I'm like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I just want to let you know, you know, I loved you in this. And this is what I told Keith Sutherland. He also he had a very obscure voice acting role in the Metal Gear Solid games. <laughs> That's cool. He did, like, two games, and there he was great in them. Fucking murdered on. I loved it. And I, I really did game. loved it. I, You know, so I was like, hey, man, I loved you in... Uh, the new Metal Gear Solids. You really That's fucking so killed that role. And he like, it was why Earl even saw it. It was like, cause everyone was like, Hey, I loved you. Shout this. Out to Earl. Yeah. Everyone like, yeah. yeah, everyone was like, I loved you in this. I loved you in this. And he was like, uh, he goes, uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Blah, blah. But once I dropped that Metal Gear Solid reference, he was like, his eyes lit up. Yeah. Like, he was do like, know he was like, like, oh. <laughs> he's like, thank you, bro. I yeah. really appreciate that. <laughs> like he stopped and was like, thanks bro. And then like he, then he kept walking. I was like, Oh fuck. It's and so like, I remember funny, they're like, man. dude, he stopped to say, I was like, yeah, man, that's wild. It was such a dumb little interaction, but I was like, I was yeah, like, dude, those things are where, like, make life ha- happy, you know? Yeah. Like, um, Ant Man, what's his name? Uh, oh, the guy that played Ant Man? Yeah, yeah. I don't know his name, but I know what he looks like. Nicest man in the yeah. world. Charming. I literally showed him <laughs> how to leave the comedy store. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I walked him from the back bar to the parking lot. It was like a two minute conversation. Just the nicest guy I've ever met. I remember just like at the end of it, I was just like, hey, you're a really nice guy. He goes, thanks, bro. And I'm like, you're just, you're you're a good dude. And he was like, cool. Uh, I met Ra- uh, Rami Malik's uh, brother. Right on. Right yeah, on. yeah. Uh, and uh, I was, that was just kind of cool. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I didn't realize it was, it was, he has a twin. He has a twin brother. I thought it was just like, I was like, oh, man. And I was like, oh, shit. That's crazy, man. Like, I can't imagine the amount of random people that you see would see on like in any given week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, for John what, Mayer, just randomly, bro. Yeah, dude. I, I was there one time, too, and you've probably seen it a bunch of times where like John Mayer went up to do stand-up, and it yeah. was just very interesting to yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, hey, when like, your best friend's... really happening? Yeah, when your best friend's Dave Chappelle, you know, anything can happen. It's uh, just fucking insane, yeah. Yeah, and I've seen Dave drop in there a few times and felt like... Mayor gave me God, mushrooms like, once. 
that's a fucking story. Yeah, I that's was uh, insane. Because you know, I've you know, I've seen that him guy's a, cool. He's man. a cool dude, and like we, we <laughs> shot the shit a few times at the store, yeah. and you know. He was he judged one of my roast battles, so he yeah. saw me win. So like you know, when I see him, he's like, "Oh hey," when I'm you know what I mean. Like it's yeah, it's not like weird. Uh, and like you know, him and Dave were talking about they were doing doing a set where they're talking about doing mushrooms. And, yeah, you know, Dave was doing some mushrooms. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we're in the back, and I was like, uh, John was getting ready to leave, and I was like, "Hey man, do you yeah. need more mushrooms?" And he was just like, "Um, I don't think I do." And then he goes in his pocket and he goes, actually, I have one microdose pill left. And I'm like, dope. And he was like, you can have it. And he gave it to me. I was like, sweet. Dude, that's... And I took it. And then I forgot that I took it. And then uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to drive my boy home. Yeah. And I forgot that, like, microdose is different than all everyone else's microdose. This is like Grateful Dead, I tour. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So this is like a macro yeah, dose. Yeah, to yeah. Some... Oh, homeboy's coming back with a lighter. Hold this spot. Thank, Thank you. you so You're welcome. Oh, you. careful right behind you. Thanks, Doc. Okay. Later. Um, Glad to see you brighten people's day up yeah. already, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, the, yeah he, he gave so me the like, microdose. So, like, I dropped my boy off, and yeah. I start driving home, and I start to feel it. Oh, no. And I'm crossing, like, <laughs> I'm crossing over. It just rained in L.A., and yeah. I'm driving over this puddle, and there's a split second where I'm like, am I going to drive into this puddle? That's not yeah, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And then I got home, and I was like, "Okay," and I just pet my wife for like three hours. That's but, uh, funny. I've accidentally driven on mushrooms three times, and it is. <laughs> I'm worried about my well-being. You probably shouldn't do that. No, absolutely. Uh, it was we'll micro doses, but, uh, but yeah. I imagine that's. Uh, this is a long, long time ago, according to uh, for legal reasons. This yeah, is a joke. Just yeah, but you know, for sake of interest, what can you describe it? Oh yeah, uh, so the second time. <laughs> My boy's coming yeah. to visit, and uh, we were gonna. We did a podcast. We did little mushrooms, yeah. and we're gonna go hang out at the store. And then, so we took him before we got to the store. So we took him at my house, got to the store. Yeah. And then it was like, all right, that way we can hit the store. We can be chill for a few hours, and then you know we can leave, and we'll be fine. We get to the store, and we forget that it's closed yeah. on Tuesdays. It's so closed on Tuesday. It was closed on one of these days because okay. of the COVID stuff. Oh, right, right, yeah. So, like, we're there, and I'm like, oh, fuck, we got to get back to my place. And then, like, yeah. the mushrooms start to hit, and I'm like, oh, fuck, the adventure <laughs> begins. <laughs> so, like, we had a race to get home, right? No, I didn't race home at oh, all. I, I'm sorry. So, if you ever go, yeah. uh, <laughs> if you ever drive to the store, you know, if you make yeah. a right up Kings, you can go up up the hills. Mm -hmm. If you go up there, it leads all the way to uh, Hollywood and Laurel Canyon. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a whole back way. So, me and my boy were literally driving 10, 15 miles an hour, the whole back roads home. Very and then, gracefully through the yeah, most expensive man. part oh of my God. LA. And then we get to my place and like yeah. I get out of the car. And you know how when you get out of the car, you feel like the car like springs kind of like, you feel like the car move Reset, up. And, yeah. yeah. It felt like that, except the car wasn't moving. It was the world. Oh, man. And then I was like, okay, I can't smoke anymore or do mushrooms. And then we just walked up and down <laughs> Hollywood. It was great. That's so great, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hate that we brought this up again. This is like the fifth time I think we've brought up mushrooms on the podcast. Not at but, all. Uh, there is something interesting about that. I would say well, we can I, do it. Um, I mean, you got it. I mean, I'm a very big advocate for mushrooms. I mean, yeah. they were doing tests with it for um, there are treating alcoholism and yeah, stuff. So and it's like depression and PTSD. absolutely, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I'd all rather people things. take mushrooms than most of the pills out there. Yeah, then alcohol rather than, like, going out and being just, like, drunk on rage, you know? Like, yeah. there's a lot worse ways to live, definitely. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, if we're noticing anything from the, or if we're learning anything from the boomer generation that's all live right now, it's that the hippies made it. They kept living. Yeah. You know, they were fine. Yeah. <laughs> they had it right the whole time. Yeah, apparently. So, everybody, I know it's weird because of COVID, but brace yourself for the second renaissance. <laughs> um yeah, man. So, going back, because I, I like hearing stories, uh, you've been on quite a few road gigs throughout mm -hmm. your journey as coming up as a comedian. Um, have you had any particularly like wild nights or crazy experiences or I mean, met any interesting, odd people out there? Yeah. That are just normal? Uh, my wife hates it when I go on the road because I'm always yeah. like texting her. You know, she's like, text me when you get back to the hotel. And then I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'm always like, 
random like hey i met some people that are gonna smoke weed so we're gonna go smoke weed and then she's like are you at some random person's house we're in a statue yeah yeah, yeah. i'm like no no we're fine yeah yeah dude i've like i do one time i ended up in the woods of north carolina at some dude's house <laughs> in their fucking like man cave den and it was like seven of us we're all just smoking so having funny. fun someone's wife's dancing in the corner i'm like Yo, is this gonna be a gangbang? Cause I gotta leave. Right. This like, is I'm not weird. <laughs> like I'll watch you guys all fuck this chick, uh, I need but the I'm not gonna. Bit. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, but yeah. no, they were great people. They're very nice. And then we had to call like an Uber, and like our Uber <laughs> driver drove. It was like two miles off the road. That's so funny. Man. And like she was like, I was gonna turn around halfway through, but I needed the story, and like. <laughs> We get to our hotel room. Yeah. She was like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna need you to tip me more because you know I'm I'm I, I just picked you up from the gangbang." House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was like, "My car's covered in fucking yeah. mud," and I was like, "Yeah, dude, I'll I'll I threw extra money for a fucking car wash and shit." <laughs> but I was like, "Damn, dude, that was wild." Um, I mean, me and Bert Kreischer. I mean, you know, it's just the like machine. partying with him was just fun. It was just nothing crazy. It was just you know, getting drunk, just talking yeah. comedy, having fun. All the guys I go out on the road with aren't like, it's not like it used to be where you're all doing coke and shit. Like yeah. when I, when I went out with Jezelnik, like we just chilled in the green room after the shows, drank beers, talked shit. There's something really Everyone nice. leaves and then you just go back to the hotel and that was it. And like some comics are like, hang out at the hotel. Other comics are like, you know, we're going to go check out the zoo and do shit. Exactly. And it's it just depends, but yeah. Say so there's something really nice about going into a random city and then seeing like someone you know and say, like, Oh, thank God, like Yeah. It just makes you feel very safe no matter where you are. And it's it, like those random moments, like you said, going to the zoo. Yeah. The, Colorado's great. I remember I've gone and hung out with a lot of friends and comics and there's it's great to see meet comics in LA yeah. and then go and meet them in their hometown. Are they and different people? No, not even. Or, it's just fun. It's like continuing where the, you know, the party left off last time, you know? Yeah, There's a bunch of really cool. dope comics that I know from different scenes that, you know, when I'm in town and we hang out, it's just fucking fun, man. Yeah. Is there any particular scene that you really enjoy outside of L.A. scene? Damn. Uh, Arizona had a fucking Phoenix. <laughs> Arizona had a fire scene. San Francisco's got a great scene. Detroit's got a great scene. Uh I mean, this is all pre-COVID. Uh, Colorado yeah. was a great scene. I think I said that already. Uh, yeah. Well, fuck yeah, dude. Well, so, I mean, this is this is it for you. Frank Castillo is comedy or bust, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, at this point, it's like, I'm not going to go. I mean, dude, I haven't worked a real job. My last real job was Starbucks, and that was yeah. seven years ago, maybe. Like, Is there anything else you'd ever want to do in life, you think? I mean... I, I mean, I, if it was like you could never do stand up again, if it was like never doing anything in the entertainment industry, I know I wanted to be a chef for the longest time. I really? loved cooking, dude. Yeah, but I'm not good at it. Yeah. I'm okay at it. But I would love to be a chef. Chef is, a, is something I wanted to be for a very long time, or a video game designer. Dude, I could see you being a video game designer for sure. Yeah, I got the outfit. You have a video game that you're playing a lot of right now. Yeah, the, me and my boys play a lot of NBA two or no uh, golf, two K two K golf. Uh, yeah. It's just great. And then Warzone. I just picked up Need for Speed Payback. What I've been doing, I'm I like now that everything's digital, they're starting to upload a lot of the old catalogs. Yeah. So a lot of the platforms are really smart. Like PlayStation Store is starting to rotate certain games for like nine bucks five bucks you know what i mean so the mm-hmm. sales are pretty dope where you're like oh i can get the original grand theft auto trilogy for 30 bucks yeah they, they're really good deals and then you're like fuck okay yeah and then so yeah it's pretty wild to see all that and i'm really into video games it's it's a bad addiction no it's a good addiction man there's much worse things out there and you have a twitch channel too right i do and i need to get back on it what's your twitch channel frank for everybody? C comedy all right, so everybody go out there and add it. And uh, I've said this a lot, but if you haven't already, please subscribe to Danny Frank's Walks of Life on all podcasts, mediums. Uh, tell your friends and uh, just let anybody know. Please leave a review. Oh, that guy was pissed. You made me stop in my port. That girl got a <laughs> it's a weird day for tiktokers yeah, up here, man. man all right well we're about winding down uh i have two questions for you though that i always ask everybody mm-hmm. and it's uh 
couple questions, three questions, but first two are... My favorite is this guy's going to be like, and on your left, you can see two comics starting a podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we're... For those of you who can't see, which is all of you, uh, we have a HollywoodTours.com Celebrity Homes, Landmarks, and More van. Uh, it, it, that guy could be looking at us with the microphones and saying something, couldn't he? Everyone that gets duped into these things is so funny to me. I know, man. All right, go. What was the question? Uh, the question was, um, if you could go back in time and tell your younger self a bit of advice that would like, help you on your journey, what do you think you would say? Um, stop worrying and just stop worrying and write more. And if you can give some advice to anyone out there to help them in their journey. Stop worrying and write more. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then uh, do you have the any... the same guy? <laughs> the same guy, yeah. Just younger. <laughs> If um, if you could pick like one song that's like very special or significant to you, that you go back to a lot or that's on top of your head, oh, recently or like my mind? my go to. What's your go to? My go to is uh, Pearl Jam's "Given to Fly." No, no, uh, yellow uh, yellow bed letter. Yellow bed letter. Yeah, that intro is just fucking. That guitar on that is fucking insane. Oh, fuck yeah! You don't play guitar, do you? I used to. I used to play guitar a lot. Is this going to be a second dude coming up to the window? Mm. Do you guys no. have any... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's like, do you have any matchers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, do you guys have an extra podcast XLR cable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need a mic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, before we get going, uh, is there anything you want to plug? Anything book-wise, quote-wise? Anything you want anybody to go check out? Um, Whatever you want. Yeah. Everyone should watch The Social Dilemma on Netflix. It fucking scared the shit out of me. Um, I'm afraid to watch that. Also, Evil's great. Uh, it's got <laughs> Luke Cage, and uh, I should know the actor's name. Uh, but I just call him Luke Cage because he's smashing that role. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, on that, check out Buddies on uh, iTunes, everywhere you can get podcasts, and YouTube. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Frank, for thank coming you, out. Thank you, bro. Uh, thank you for showing me this awesome spot. I'm looking at... Universal Studios version of Hogwarts as we speak. Uh, and yeah, thank you all for listening. If you made it this far, I commend you. Uh, turn in in two weeks and we'll have another exciting episode. Until then, though, thank you again. This is Danny Franks, Walks of Life. Yo!